Not that long ago in my R5 Tips and Tricks series, I looked at how to download movies and images from, well, the EOS R5 and its siblings to a computer directly over the camera's USB-C connection. Now, in the comments to that video, it was repeatedly requested for me to do a video talking about how to do the same thing with the EOS R5C, something I initially thought would be really straightforward and simple. But that's what we're going to be talking about today. So. What do we need to know about transferring images and videos from the R5C over USB, and how is it different from the EOS R5? To start with, just like the R5, the R5C uses the USB Media Transfer Protocol, or MTP, to transfer media from it to a computer. Now, in my testing, this doesn't seem to really affect transfer speeds, assuming you have a similar speed card reader but it does affect what can be transferred. In both photo and video modes, you can access the files on both the SD and CF Express cards in the camera. However, not all file types can be seen or transferred. Even more confusingly, just what formats you can see and transfer depends on whether the camera is in video or still photo modes. In video mode, the camera can transfer MP4s and JPEG files only. In photo mode, the camera can transfer MP4s for video, as well as RAW and JPEG files. However, in either mode, the camera cannot transfer RAW or XFAVC format video files at all. They simply don't show up when you access the camera, and so far, or to the extent even that if you open the camera on Windows, the folders where they would normally be stored on the card don't even appear at all. Now, as for actually transferring things, we start this by simply turning on our camera and plugging it into our computer. Now, if you use Windows, your camera will show up as a camera in File Explorer as soon as your operating system has detected it. From there, you can double click on the camera's icon and then on either the SD or CF Express card, depending on which ones are in the camera, to open them. And from that point on, it's just copying files the same way you would copy files from any other USB drive or hard drive or whatever. Now on a Mac, things are a little bit different. Since the camera uses the media transfer protocol, it does not show up on your desktop like a SD card plugged into the a computer's card slot would or any other media or storage device. Instead, you have to open the image cam capture app to access the images on the camera. Once the app is open, select the camera from the sources list on the left side, wait for the thumbnails to load, and then select the files you want to copy, and then click download to download those files to your computer. Alternatively, you can download all of the files that are available from the camera by clicking download all to download everything. Now, while the process of transferring media from the R5C to your computer really isn't any different than that for any other Canon camera, there is one big caveat that you have to bear in mind through this whole process, and that's power consumption. The Cinema EOS OS that the R5C runs when it's in video mode is written with the assumption that just because you're not recording to the internal media card doesn't mean that you're not recording the camera's output externally. Consequently, the camera always runs its sensor at full resolution and the selected frame rate and down samples to your output resolution. As a result, we see that the R5C has much higher power consumption, even when it's not actively recording. This is why, even when the camera is otherwise idle, the R5C's battery only lasts for about 50 minutes to an hour, or 80 minutes if you have an LPE6P battery in the camera, when the R5 can idle for a lot longer on the same batteries. So, when downloading images, you need to consider the high power usage of the camera. Now, one approach to dealing with this is to switch the camera into photo mode. This, of course, will let you access MP4 videos as well as all of the photo formats the camera shoots. There are their power consumption, especially at when the camera is idle and even more so when it's hooked up to a computer, drops significantly compared to what the camera sees in video mode. 
Based on my testing when using the normal viewfinder refresh rate settings, idle power in photo mode is about 3.6 watts, while in video mode at 1080p and 24 frames per second, power usage is up, about to, up to about 6.3 watts. Basically, it's almost double. Now, the other option, if you don't want to flip the switch to go into photo mode, is to use the media review mode by pressing the media button on the back of the camera when it's in video mode. Now, while the media review mode doesn't reduce power consumption nearly as much as photo mode does, it does lower it by about 33% based on my testing, which is still an improvement. Now, finally, the R5C, like other Canon cameras, can use USB power delivery while transferring photos, provided at least that the computer it's connected to supports the required power profiles. For example, my workstation, which has an Asus ProArt motherboard in it, can provide the necessary power on its USB front panel port. This means that I can download from my camera to my workstation without draining the camera's battery at all, even without taking any steps to do any further power consumption on the camera. However, my 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro can't provide enough power on its USB ports, even when it's plugged into a 100-watt charger. As a result, I can't download on my MacBook Pro without the camera draining its own battery in the process. Therefore, if you're downloading images or video without switching the media review screen or to photo mode, expect to see significant battery drain in this process. By and large, you can expect to have around 50 minutes to complete whatever transferring you're needing to do before the battery will be depleted and you'll need to recharge it. Of course, more if you're using an E6P battery. If you do this all in photo mode, ba the battery should last at least double that amount of time, if not significantly longer due to the reduced idle power consumption and the larger amount of the battery's capacity that the camera can use in photo mode. Alternatively, if switching to photo mode is not desired, I would at minimum recommend turning on the media review screen if you are going to download more than a single file. That said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. Also, if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Finally, if you'd like to help and support this channel, you can help us for free by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and leaving a comment with your experiences. Likewise, you can support us by hitting that thanks button or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.